and welcome to another edition of King Crush Thursdays, the series where we highlight and uplift Black men, because frankly, not too many people are doing it. My name is Val Gay, and I'm super excited to bring this brother to you today. He is an educator. He's a native of, of Haiti who was super smart when he was five years old, came here, learned how to speak English very quickly, is now an award-winning uh, educator. And he started his own podcast in 2020. Um, and so you'll read more about that below. But in the meantime, please welcome Mr. G. Hello, sir. Uh, Val, thank you so much for uh, bringing me on. And it's definitely an honor to be on your program. I was checking out just a list of however many Black men that came before me that you had. Um, and it's really special to be amongst those type of men. Uh, so I do appreciate you having me on and the work that you're doing, because I think more of us need to do that work. And there's not a lot of spaces like you just mentioned in which, you know, black men are celebrated and honored for the work that they do. So I appreciate just having this um, space to be able to talk about what I do. Awesome. Thank you so much, my brother. And I'm so glad that you are here um, because we are changing the narrative with each of these conversations, each of these interviews. The narrative that is very myopic and very narrow about Black manhood and Black mandom, if you will, in the greater, broader community. Um, and so we are with these interviews creating a repository of six questions on our way to 100 answers by 100 different positive and successful Black men. And um, with the goal ultimately for a young king who may or may not have positive Black male role models in his life to come for him to come to this repository, see these same six questions and the hundred different answers and hopefully find guidance in that. And then for the rest of us who are neither uh, male or even Black, that we can take a glimpse into this um, community, which often, again, because of the media is very narrowly defined, but we know it to be so much more. And so I'm so glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're contributing to this narrative busting project. And with that, I want to get started with the first question, which is, what does manhood mean to you? Man, that is uh, such a thought provoking question. Um, I do want to start off by shouting out to the person that is a uh, responsible for me being here with the, which is brother Shamari. Um, I know he's probably one of your previous interviews, but uh, the work that he's doing is special as well. Um, he works, uh, you know, a lot of community work for us and just on the grounds. Um, he uh -huh. has a show called Groundings that he has every uh, Sunday and Friday night, I believe. Um, so he's the person that kind of requested for me to come on here. So thank you, brother Shamari and everyone check him out. Uh, to get into your question of manhood, uh, for me, um, I have to think about it in the context of Black manhood, because I think there are different experiences and different challenges for us as Black men that other people do not have. And when I think about manhood, it has to be from that lens. And there are people that I think about, you know, with Black manhood. Um, for me, it's uh, Toussaint Louverture. It's uh, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, it's Marcus Garvey, it's Malcolm X, it's Medgar Evers, it's James Baldwin, it's Martin Luther King, it's Huey P. Newton, it's Amos Wilson. Uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. And, but those people kind of embody some, some characteristics for me, like the love of Black people, um, standing up against, you know, oppression and racism, um, regardless of consequences. I think that, you know, Sometimes we are apprehensive and doing what we know is the right thing to do because we are fearful of what could be consequences and it, they could be heavy consequences. We're talking about death. We're talking about the harm of our family, our friends, our loved ones, um, getting fired or your career not taking off like you wanted to. But these people sacrifice everything um, because they had a vision of the future for us. And I think that is an important characteristic as well, like being able to vision a better future than our realities right now um being about action and not just words so even though some of the people i mentioned like they they had a lot of speeches and they spoke a lot but if you look behind the scenes of what they were doing it was a lot of action oriented stuff to enhance black people to enhance the community so for me that's what i think about when i think about um black men and then lastly um being ready to fight or die for what they believe in and i think that that's an ultimate challenge and then fighting to die for our families as well, you know, being able to protect our families and 
come to to have that challenge of fighting or dying for what we believe in. And I think that as men, when we look at the future and have, having something for our children or our children's children, we have to put ourselves on the line. So I think real men put themselves on the line to create a better future. So th those are the things that I think about. And then, you know, treating everybody respectfully uh, with dignity um, and then um, being an example of leadership through actions, through what we do and not just, you know, through talk or uh, saying to do this, but we are embodying the things that we're we're encouraging other people to do. So th those are just uh, a long list of things I think about when I think about black, black manhood and manhood within itself through our lens. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. So Mr. G, who and or what is important to you? It's a great question, man. Um, for me, uh, for me, it's uh, definitely black people and black children. And um, I don't think enough of us, you know, do the work and care enough about Black people and Black children to to do what is necessary for us to have better realities and better futures. So those are the, the main things that, are, that I focus on. And I do have people that ask, like, why not everybody? Why just Black people and Black children? And for me, you know, even being an educator, if you have, like, a balanced being and, you know, one side is imbalanced, right? One side is higher than the other side and you want to create balance. You put your effort and your energy into the side that is, you know, not where it should be. So for me, I view that as black people and black children. So I put my effort and my energy into black people and black children in order to hopefully be a part in creating that balance so that, you know, we can have equality amongst amongst um, everybody. That's so awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. And so, Mr. G, how do you want us to see you? Man, uh, that's, you asked some tough questions. But <laughs> no. uh, for me, I think uh, as someone who's a champion for Black people, uh, somebody who promotes the best of Black people, I think there are all type of avenues and fields where people, you know, promote the worst in us and promote negativity and you know, the things that we find in all cultures, but sometimes are, are are heightened in our culture. And we think that these things are what Black people are about. But I'm somebody that promotes the best of us, the best things that we are about, and um, the amazing and great things that we're doing as educators, as scientists, as uh, inventors, as athletes, as, you know, everybody, you know. So somebody who definitely champions uh, Black people. Uh, and then for me personally, uh, somebody who is on a path towards self-mastery. And that's one of the things that I promote in my podcast. And for me, like I have what I call the five pillars of self-mastery and it's a continuous type of thing. So we're talking about like self-reflection, uh, self-understanding, self-control, self-love. And then at the top of the pillar is what we call self-mastery. So um, I don't know if we have time. I don't, I don't want to break everything down. We can, but those are the things that um, I try to implement in my life. And then I like continuously am learning about myself and developing myself and growing myself. Um, so that is another portion just of, of me. And I want people to see me as somebody who, you know, is championing for black people and then also attempting to better themselves um, holistically as well. That's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. So we'll, we'll get a link to your podcast, um, especially the, the definitions and going deeper and have it in um, the body below, the, the copy below, and that way folks can check it out more. How about that? Mm -hmm. That would be great, thank you. Awesome, awesome, excellent. And so thank you so much, Mr. G. So number four, question number four is, what is your epic dream? Yeah, another hard question, uh, epic dream. Um, for me, again, I think about things through the Black lens. So for me, one of the things that uh, create a lot of issues amongst us as Black people is racism and uh, white supremacy, which is one and the same. So I would look into the, the elimination of racism and white supremacy uh, and any unjust system that involves inequality in people, other people getting treated better um, than other people. Uh, so I look at you know, I would look into a system in which there is equality and um, for black folks, for us to be able to to look in the mirror and see and see beauty and see intelligence and see love 
All right. And um, and then find peace. And then through that, when we look outside of the mirror and we look at other black folks, we can see the same thing. Um, and we can treat each other accordingly to how we would treat ourselves. So that is a part of my vision. And then also um, for black children. So our children and our children's children to be able to uh, think about their wildest dreams and not to be limited and to have a fear of of death, a fear of not being able to do certain things and to just be ultra confident to where anything that exists in their minds, they can create and make into a re reality and have the confidence that they can do so. So pretty much a world where they're not afraid to be themselves, a world where they know that they're gonna be supported and loved and appreciated and that they can grow into full capable adults. So that's what I kind of look at. Um, and then overall, what we're, what we're essentially talking about is pretty much freedom for everybody. Right, freedom to be able to do what we want to do without limitations, to be able to say what we want to say, um, feel how we want to feel, and to just be what we're supposed to be, which is human beings. And I think a lot of um, things in regards to racism and white supremacy prevent us from being our full and true self. So the elimination of that, I think, would, would help um, in you know, my, my vision of the future. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So question five, you've been answering, I believe, all along implicitly, but I'm going to ask you explicitly, Mr. G, who are you? Who am I? All right. Uh, for me, one of my favorite quotes is an African proverb is I am because we are. So um, in that context, what I think about is just me being the byproduct of um, my African ancestors that, you know, survived the voyage from Africa into IET into Haiti, um, and then uh, my Haitian ancestors uh, that saw that there was an unjust system there and that they didn't want to be slaves anymore and that they were ready to fight um, and or die in order for their children to have a better reality. So I'm a byproduct of that. And then um, also my parents that had a vision of having a better future for their children uh, moving into America. I'm a product of that. Um, and then being, um, even, even from a biological standpoint, um, you know, I'm a product of 250 to 500 million sperm, um, making it to one egg. So for me, I think about being special in that regards, you know, because that I was the only one that made it, you know, so I'm a product of that. And then looking at uh, the lens of this country, I'm a product of those civil rights leaders, some of the ones that I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the Martin Luther Kings, the Medgar Evers, the Malcolm X's, uh, the Huey P. Newtons, um, and also our sisters too, the Dr. Francis Cress Welsings, the Fannie Lou Hamers, like all of those people that that have fought to better our situation. And I'm a you know product of that, you know, being here and being able to enjoy some of the things that they have fought for, and um, you know that we're continuing to 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 make better. So. I'm a product of all those things. And just me holistically, I'm an educator. Um, I'm a student. Um, I'm a parent. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a friend. Uh, and, you know, that I'm holistically myself. So that's what I kind of think about, you know. That's awesome. Excellent. 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 Well, so here we are already at question six, which is, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't, or you wanted me to ask you that I didn't? In other words, what did I miss? Uh, oh, you know what? Um, I did want to say uh, that uh, one thing. Um, I'm also, I, I, I saw this quote uh, somewhere, like I think in school before, and it just really stuck out to me. Like somebody said, um, I'm my ancestors' wildest dreams. Um, and I love that. So I'm also that too. But um, the continuation of their dreams, I think, is something that we all have to kind of think about. So how can we continue to work that a lot of the people that I mentioned today um, and some of the people that have been fighting for us to get equality, to get justice and to have better situations in life? How can we do the work as well? Because sometimes I think when we think about um, civil rights leaders and we think about Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and Huey P. Newton, um, Fannie Lou Hamer, all these people, we think that they're like outside of us, but they, they are in us. And the same things that they've been able to do, we are able to do. And we're supposed to be continuing their work. 
not just sitting back and admiring their work, even though their their work is something worthy of admiration and for us to embody, but we have to ask ourselves, how can I continue the work that they've done? How can I expand um, you know, the the visions that they had, the visions of my ancestors? So I would challenge people that are listening in to kind of really think about how they can continue the work that has been done, that has been laid out for us. Our situation has gotten better, um, but there's a lot of work to be done in order to make it an ideal situation, in order to make it an equal situation, in order to make it into a situation where we are all thriving. And I think that's what we should be kind of reaching for, where we are all thriving. And um, like I said, our children are able to dream and we're able to dream without any setbacks or anybody holding us back. So I think as Black adults, our responsibility is to ask ourselves, what is it that I can do? And it could be, you know, it, it doesn't have to be in the same uh, velocity and intensity that we had, you know, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King do it, but just doing things in your own community, um, being uh, able to support, talk to, provide for, help a Black child in your community, you know? And I think uh, right now we're in a position uh, dealing with COVID where our children are like silently suffering and they're dealing with a lot of mental health issues that uh, as adults, sometimes we just don't, we're working, we're busy, um, we're not around all the time and we might not know about, but the same way that COVID has impacted us is, you know, even magnified for our children. So I think that we have to really turn the attention towards um, Black children and being able to provide for them what they need. And even if you don't have a Black child, like being able to talk to those guys on the streets, being able to um, mentor a Black child or speak to a Black child regularly and, you know, to help them uh, get through these tough times because it's not just tough, tough for us as adults, it's tough for the kids and the babies. So we really have to, um, you know, think about what we can do. And I think there's so much to be done where every individual can do something. So nobody should be like, well, I'm just a this and that and a third. I can't really do anything. We can do the bare minimum and that's doing something, you know? The bare minimum is talking to um, our children. The bare minimum is asking them like, yo, what do you need? Do you need me to buy you lunch today? Do you need me to walk with you to school? Do you need me to um, go with you to this parent-teacher conference? Like whatever it is, do you need me to go to your games? Do you need me to, you know, do you need a dollar? Like whatever that our kids need, we should be able to provide them with and then to reestablish a support system and a network for them um, I feel like I'm rambling. I, I don't want to ramble on your show. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think we we have to kind of step up to the plate and like intensify our efforts because our children are suffering. I, I'm with them every day. And some of the things that they're going through and that they struggle with, sometimes their parents don't know. Um, sometimes other people, adults in their life don't know, but they need help, you know? So we got to definitely do what we can to help them. And with helping them, we're helping ourselves because we're talking about the future of our existence, right? Black children are the future of us. And if we care about the future, we have to invest in it and we have to provide um, what they need so that we can provide a better future in this, you know, for, for everybody. So those are the kind of the things that, you know, I think about. That is really awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, our, our young people, we, we don't know what the impact of COVID is going to have on, have on an entire generation of people um, who were either born in or started to be reared in or make, came of age in during the age of COVID. Um, and so, you know, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I am glad that you are in the classroom with our students. I actually was reflecting right before our, our interview, the number of Black male teachers I had during my entire um, educational career that includes from kindergarten all the way up to a graduate degree. And I can count them on one hand and have fingers left over. And so you are really important as you well know already in the, in the uh, classroom, particularly for our young people who look like you to, to see themselves. And so I honor you, my King, and I just pray that you Will grow deeper and wider, that your epic dream will indeed come true. As you were speaking, all I could hear was um, Louis Armstrong's song, um, What a Wonderful World. Like, what a wonderful world it would be if your epic dream comes true. And so I do hope 
it it does indeed. So thank you so much, Mr. G. I appreciate that. And um, I would just add one more thing too, like uh, black men are less than 2% in the educational field, um, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be a certified educator to be an educator in your community and to provide education in your community. So um, just because we're less than 2% doesn't mean that there aren't other folks in the community that have other areas of expertise that can teach. And that's kind of like what we do on our mastermind podcast, on our program, where we have um, people that are entrepreneurs, people that are uh, athletes, people that are uh, educators in other fields, um, people that are in all walks of life, but they still um, have these experiences and these skills that can be um, passed on. And they are, in a sense, educators as well. So I think we have to expand that definition of what it means to be an educator. If you have a list of experiences and a skill set that somebody younger can benefit from and you're providing that, then you are an educator. So I think that we can think about it as, like that as well and not just think about, well, we're less than 2% in the educational field, but education occurs way beyond the four walls of school. You know, it, it occurs, you know, all throughout our lives and our, our parents are our first educators and the people in our communities are our first educators. So if we step up and we do what we got to do in the community area and then the people, the black men that you've interviewed uh, that are doing great things and other black men in the community that have other areas of expertise, pass that on to a young black child and be an educator. And uh, I would just say that. That's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. You actually said it much more eloquently than what I was going to say, which is um, I'm just super happy that you're here. And I just want to thank you and thank you audience for joining us today. I hope that you were as lifted, um, enlightened as I am and maybe feel the charge to get out there and do something. We, um, we're excited about this narrative. I'm so grateful for this conversation today. And if there's a positive and successful black man in your life that you want to see highlighted in this forum, please click the link below or in my bio and fill out the nomination form and we'll take it from there. We are on I'm our way glad. to 100 um, positive black men. And I'll say um, success. And this is where Mr. G um, so eloquently um, articulated this. Success is not based on what one does for a living, but the impact that one has on the lives of others, starting with their nuclear family and then going out to the, the community writ large. And just as he said, if you have a skill, if, if you, you have something that you can teach others, you're an educator and in some respects it's your duty to go ahead and pass it on. I would say those are the brothers that we're looking for. We're looking certainly for the, the, the professional educators, the professional whatever, um, but also and also um, other brothers who are in every aspect of our lives and that may go unnoticed until we turn our attention to them. And so, two more quick things before you yeah, go them. ahead, sure. Um, yeah, so for anybody interested that wants to see uh, some positive Black excellence, uh, check out our podcast, Mastermind, M-A-S-T-E-R-M-I-N-E. -E. Um, and, you know, you will be enlightened and uh, you could share it with others. And we're trying to create a, a space that promotes uh, Black excellence and also motivates, educates, and inspires Black people globally. So we have, you know, a really huge mission that we're trying to fulfill, um, but it's something that, like I said, that we need and is a continuation of what our ancestors um, wanted and have done. So we, we are continuing to work. Um, so definitely check that out. And then at the end of my program, I usually have a, a quote um, or our ethos. Um, so I, I would like to leave with that, Val, if, with your permission. Absolutely. So it is, uh, your mind is the most powerful tool in the universe. Therefore, if you can think it, you can do it. If you believe in it, you can be it. And if you fight for it, you can have it. The world is yours. So that is how I think we should be thinking. That is beautiful. And with that, please remember to spread love and have a great day. Thanks so much. And thank you, Mr. G. That was really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.